Hello furniture friends, welcome to 2022. This is the first video of the year and I'm super excited to show you what I'm working on. This little mid-century dresser was a Facebook marketplace find. At first glance to someone who maybe doesn't know a whole lot about furniture, this might actually look like a mahogany piece. One because of the color and two because of the faux wood grain they have printed on everything. I assure you it is not actually mahogany. This piece is solid poplar for the most part. I'm not sure about these handles. I don't love the shape of them. I have kind of an industrial vibe in my head for this piece, kind of my vision for it. One thing's for sure, it definitely needs an update. So stay tuned, you're not gonna recognize this piece when I'm done. My name is Angie and I refinish furniture. Sometimes I paint and sometimes I don't, but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. Okay, wasting no time jumping right in here. The first thing I do when I'm working on a dresser is to pull all the drawers out and make sure the drawers are intact. All the dovetail joints are tight, the glue blocks are in place. You can see this one's missing a glue block, I'll have to replace that. And I also make sure that the glides and slides are sturdy and intact. I also pull off all of the hardware. Usually at this point, I'm trying to decide if I want to reuse it, repurpose it, or replace them all together. In this case, I may end up reusing the top ones, but I am not loving the hardware on the lower drawers. I don't like the shape. I kind of have a vision for this piece and it's just not going to fit into that vision at all. Pull this one drawer out and on the bottom I see a signature. Now graffiti is not uncommon if used furniture, especially if there were kids around it, but I think this is actually a maker's signature. So I did a little digging online and I did find one based out of Quebec, which is here in Canada. Um, the dates are right and I'm pretty sure that's who made this dresser, which is kind of cool. And there it is. I always find a plastic drawer piece that's broken in every single dresser. Always. There's at least one. Luckily, I keep these on hand and I'm actually just going to do this right away and then it's done and I won't forget about it. It's a different shape than the other one, but as long as the height is right and the width is good, and I'm gonna give it a little test here before I fully install it. Looks good, so I'm gonna go ahead and drill some holes because the holes here on the new piece are slightly off from the other one. And put the screws on and away we go. I just wanted to show you guys the underside of the drawer faces. So on the long flat drawers, it's a solid piece of wood with this fake wood grain printed on it. This wood grain is not a veneer and you'll see that when I go to strip it off later on. And on the curved drawers, which is pretty typical, it is layers of plywood and there's actually a wood veneer on both the inside and the outer side. And on the outside, there is that same fake wood grain printed onto that veneer. I've actually done this exact dresser before, the same style, and I know from experience that the veneer on the curved drawers is not that nice, so I am gonna be painting it. This whole piece is going to be a combination of wood grain and paint. Because the sides and top are laminate and not actual wood or wood veneer, I am gonna be painting the outsides, the trim pieces, the top three drawers, and then the bottom four drawers, the big drawers, are gonna be wood grain. And if you're wondering what the heck I'm doing with this little piece of whatever that came loose when I flipped this over, I don't know what this is, but I cannot pick it up. This is the perfect time for me to use my new magnetic tool, and look, simple. I'm so happy to have one of these finally. Going back for a second to what I said about the construction of this piece. This is mostly solid wood with laminate sides and a laminate top. Everything else on this dresser is wood. The drawers are wood, the legs are wood, the frame is all wood. These dressers get overlooked all the time and I've actually had some pretty negative comments on a couple of my videos where I'm painting laminate dressers saying that these dressers are cheap, they're junk. Well, guess what? <laughs> This dresser you're looking at now, there's no denying the fact that this is obviously a higher quality dresser. It's beautiful walnut veneer, but in between those layers of veneer is pressed wood. 
which is actually quite typical of this era of furniture making. A lot of beautiful mid-century pieces are pressed wood in between layers of more expensive and exotic wood veneer. And to be honest, and I'm ranting a little bit here, but it really bothers me. Part of the reason I'm doing what I'm doing is to try to keep these pieces of furniture out of landfills. They don't belong there. Oh, laminate is junk. Well, you know what? Laminate is not wood, you're right. But this dresser is the exact same age as the walnut one I just showed you. They're both still here. They're both still sturdy. This is a solid piece of furniture. Just because it's not all solid wood doesn't make it a piece of crap. <laughs> We have to stop thinking like that. It doesn't matter what our political views are in the world. The one thing we can all agree on is that there is too much waste in landfills. Okay, now that I have that out of my system, I can explain what I was just doing. Sometimes when you put cleaner or water on these old finishes, they cloud up a bit. I just used my heat gun to dissipate that moisture before I go ahead with my 180 grit sand pad here to scuff sand the top. I'm not trying to take the finish off, all I'm trying to do is get rid of that super super shiny finish that is so typical of these dressers. I am going to be doing a spray primer on this piece, but I still want that glossy sheen to be dulled down just to give me some better adhesion. Both of the curved drawers had some separation of the veneer from the plywood, which I see all the time in these older curved drawers. Not a big deal, I'm just going to force some wood glue down there, clamp it up, let it dry, and good to go. I'm going to be painting both curved drawers, but I do need to fix this little chip, so I'm just using a little bit of wood filler, leaving it just slightly proud of the surface, and then I'll sand it smooth and flush with the surface once it's dry. Because I'm going to be spraying my primer instead of brushing it, I'm just adding some painter's tape because I don't want to get overspray all over the inside. Some overspray is pretty much inevitable, but I like to try to keep things as neat as possible when I'm spraying. I'm using a Rust-Oleum Flat Black Primer. Just smooth strokes back and forth. When you're spraying, you want to move your arm in big wide strokes. You don't really want to stand in the middle and just move your wrist. One good coat of primer should be great for this piece and then I'll be able to paint right over it. I'm using circa 1850 stripper here. I've had a few comments recently, um, people asking where to get this. I'm in Canada. Um, I'm not sure exactly if this is available outside of Canada because it is a Canadian product, but I find it here usually at stores like Kent Home Hardware. You could try Canadian Tire too, maybe. That's usually where I pick it up. And I am so sorry here for missing most of the stripping. My camera battery died and I didn't hear the beep when it turned off. So, I'm so sorry. It was very satisfying, I'll tell you that much. I grabbed a 180 grit sand pad and started to sand off the remaining red primer. So, this red primer is what they sprayed over top of the wood, which is poplar. And then, somehow, they impose that wood grain on top. I don't know the exact process. I really want to do some research and find out how some of these things were done. Man, this red stuff is a bugger to get off and to get out of all of the wood pores. But I'm doing my best here.
So this red here is the overspray from when they sprayed that primer on initially. So I'm gonna try to take off as much as I can. I'm literally not going to sit here and try to scrape out every dovetail. But I do want to clean this up as much as possible. I am going to be staining these drawers a different color and I just want it to look as neat as possible. Some of that overspray made its way into the drawer so I'm just going to try to tidy that up. I can't do this with every dresser. Sometimes the overspray is just, it's just way too much work to try to get rid of it and it doesn't really cause any issues. It just doesn't look the best. I also sanded that little bit of overspray on the inside of the drawer face. Once my primer has completely dried, I just took a 180 grit sand pad, just tried to smooth it out, make sure there were no little rough areas or spots where the dust had fallen into it. And then I'm going to go ahead with my Fusion Mineral Paint, the color is going to be coal black, and I'm going to put on my first layer of paint. I'm using a brand new brush. This brush came in a set that was gifted to me from my Amazon wishlist a little while ago. When I'm doing dresser tops painted by brush and not rolled or sprayed, I like to use a brand new brush because the bristles are really soft and it doesn't take out every brush stroke, but it does minimize it. Usually I'm not too worried about brush strokes on my first or even second coat, but I like to add a little bit of water to the paint on my final coat, which helps smooth everything out. These are the original legs and the factory had spray painted them black. I'm going to be stripping that off. I want the legs to be wood grain to match the lower drawers. So I am using some steel wool and the same circa 1850 stripper to get all of this gunk off. I'm going to give them a little hand sand and they'll be good to go. If you're new to this channel, I will tell you that sometimes I paint pieces and sometimes I restore them. It just depends on the piece. I'm not at all opposed to paint on certain pieces. I don't paint everything, but there's something so satisfying about stripping paint off a piece. I often joke around, and I'm not serious, it literally is just me joking that whenever I paint a piece, it's basically creating job security for me in the future when I have to strip it back. This is coat number two of the coal black. You can see how with each coat, the color gets darker and richer. I love this color. I will never tire of a coal black and wood grain combination. Once my second coat of full strength coal black has completely dried, I'm gonna give it a really light sanding with about a 220 grit. Then I'm gonna grab my trusty Tim Hortons cup here, I'm totally Canadian, that has just a tiny bit of water in it and I'm gonna add some paint and stir it up. I only do this for the final coat on certain pieces and the reason I do it is it gives me a little bit more working time. So normally when I'm brushing a dresser top like this, by the time I get from one side to the other, the initial part that I started painting has already started to set or dry and when you go back into that part with a brush that's when you get those peaks and valleys of brush strokes. So with a little bit of water you have just a little bit more time to smooth everything out and I like to do that for the last coat. Now I'm doing a little bit of a custom staining on these drawers and legs. I'm using Special Walnut and Classic Grey, both from Minwax. Just a heads up, I normally wouldn't recommend either stirring or taking the lids off your cans if they're sitting on top of the piece you're about to work on. Drips and splashes happen. They didn't happen here, but it has happened to me in the past, so just, just a little heads up, don't do what I just did there. <laughs> Open them on the floor or on a t another table. So 
So I'm going in first with this special walnut. This is the base color I want. I could have mixed the two stains together to make an entirely new color. That's not exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted most of this drawer to have a brown undertone and the classic gray is going right over top of it before the first layer sets. It sort of mixes with the little bit that's left on the surface and just tints it slightly. Because I'm going for a bit of an industrial vibe here, I want these drawers to have a bit of an old wood or barn board sort of feel to them. I'm in the home stretch now. I'm going to add the legs back on, pop some felt floor protectors on the legs, and I'm going to be sealing the wood and the paint with this Fusion Beeswax Hemp Oil Mix. This stuff is super easy to put on. I'm using a 1500 grit, like very mildly abrasive pad to put it on just to smooth everything out, especially on the paint. I raided my hardware stash trying to find the perfect hardware for this. I really liked the lighter iron color, but I ended up going with the flat black because I needed knobs for the top three drawers to match. By using this flat black spray paint, I was able to recycle the top drawer pulls and just paint them black to match. Once everything was dry and reassembled, I gave the whole piece a nice buffing. If you've been following my Facebook or Instagram for a while, you might be having deja vu. Earlier in 2021, I had a dresser exactly like the one I'm working on now, except it came to me painted quite poorly actually and in really bad need of refinishing. I refinished it in quite a similar way with the black paint and the wood on the drawers, but I used brass pools and I used a much, much warmer stain for the drawers. And I can't wait for you to see today's version of the same style dresser. After the reveal at the end, comment below which version of this dresser you like better, the March 2021 or the 2022 version. These blue microfiber wax pads were from my Amazon wish list from Elaine Frank and I just want to say a huge thank you. This is my first time using them and I love them. I had a few other uh, wish list items come through over the Christmas holidays. This is a roll of veneer and it is real wood veneer but it's very 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 thin. It's almost paper thin so there was no note in the box. I don't know who sent it. This is going to be great for like lining an inside of a drawer. Looking forward to using it so thank you Mr. Reviewer. <laughs> This next item is actually a silicone glue tool. So there's a little spatula on one end and sort of a silicone brush on the other one. So this is gonna make it easy to do big glue ups. This is from Sushi Girl on YouTube. Thank you so much. So this awesome screwdriver set was actually not on my wish list. This was a Christmas gift from my honey. <laughs> so huge thank you for these. I'm excited to use these. These last four items actually all came from the same person, which is amazing. This was quite a Christmas gift. I used these wax applicator sticks for stirring paint and mixing up the Odie's oil. This is actually replacement pad for my sander. So coming over here to Mr. Dewalt and looking at the bottom here, these little hooks actually wear out over time from friction and heat. They melt down. So the pads actually have to be replaced more often than the sanders. And that's exactly what this is. I go through about one a year. I love this little DeWalt box. I can't wait to put stuff in it. <laughs> and this is super cool. I'm actually doing a workroom sort of redo soon. And this is a box of all pegboard accessories. So there's baskets and hooks, just like I have up here on the peg wall now. 
I'm looking forward to sort of revamping my space, having a better workflow. This is from Lee. Thank you so much. This is so generous. Okay, the time has come now, the big reveal. Let's have a look at this crazy red dresser. Still solid and sturdy, but definitely dated, needed some love, and wow, what a difference. Let's have a look. Thank you for watching.